Welcome to The Journal. On today's show, we will showcase a mix of different talents. First, we get into the head of a drag queen, and then we get cracking at Eglinton Grill. We will also feature a Hollywood keyboard master named New York Raja, and enjoy a live performance by his number one student, Ami. And as well, wait, Bo did you say Bollywood? No, I said Hollywood, spelled with a K, because it's for Tamil films. So basically, Bollywood and Hollywood are two different things, not to be confused with a Hollywood. Well, there's always something to learn on the yes. journal. Yes. And you will too, because this journal isn't a book. This is a visual experience that will open your mind. You, you are, are now watching, watching the, the journal. journal. Absolutely nothing. You sure about that? Bet you haven't seen the journal. Check. Hello, excuse me, sir. Do you know what the journal is? What do you guys want to say? You're on live television. Welcome to the journal, live yes, from St. Daniel. We're gonna kill it today. Are you not entertained? Welcome to the journal, reporting live from Centennial College Story Arts Center in Toronto, Ontario. My name is Linda Kovac. And my name is Harish Pragaladin. Head nod. Wait, what the hell is this head nod? Well, head nod is kind of like a hello, what, which was taught by my professor, Malcolm. So please don't think I'm weird. So when you hand someone a piece of equipment, since it's really heavy, you want to make sure that they got it. So the best thing to do is head nod. Oh. So yeah, please don't think I'm weird. No, no. It's not weird at all, Harish. Here at Centennial College, it is an inclusive place where you are free to express Agreed. yourself creatively, yes. no yes. matter what race or gender. Agreed. Hi, I'm Tate, I'm 20 years old. I am a media production student and graphic designer by day, but at night I am a drag creature named Jelly. Yeah. Okay, so I first got into drag the first time I ever saw a drag queen was at this wedding, a family wedding, and we went to this karaoke thing after the function, and there was a drag queen hosting it, and it was this, her name was China Doll. Her style was very alien, big hair, nothing, wasn't trying to look like a, a woman, just trying to look like this alien creature, and from that moment, I was so interested. I was probably eight years old. So for me, drag as a trans woman isn't about feeling that fantasy it's not about looking feminine because I do that every day it's not exciting that's not a transformation for me so I grew up as a boy so for me I did male to female in my everyday life and now when I get into drag I do female to beast I started playing around with drag before I was trans and then I really started getting into it like started actually performing this summer after I had been transitioning for a while okay you ready for the gross part yes the reason I do that is because I'm about to put powder on it, and the powder locks in moisture. So the more moisture I have on the glue, the better, the flatter my texture will be. But breaking into the scene as a trans woman, I was worried there would be some difficulty, just because majority of a drag is a cisgender gay man dressing as a woman and just feeling like the, the fantasy, you know? Um, so I was worried that not being that would cause a problem. But I find that by doing my style of drag, doing it my way, people have always been interested and I haven't had any problems with that. So I use this red cream to counteract uh, the eyebrow color because once you have the white over the eyebrows, it's almost reduced to a blue. 
So by using this warm color, once I put a foundation over it, it's color corrected. So for me doing drag during COVID has actually been a little bit of an advantage. Because I'm a media production student and I do video editing during the day, doing drag in a pandemic has had its advantages for me because I can create these whole worlds. Give me a little green screen, give me my iPhone camera, and I can just go wild. There ain't no reason you and me should be alone tonight, yeah, baby, tonight, yeah, baby. I got a reason that you should take me on tonight. I need a man who thinks... So my drag persona is named Jelly. She is, she's evil, she's an alien. She's a little bit scary. She's a little bit of an animal. For me, she's this blank canvas that is not human, and I can put anything else on it. She's almost a parody of humans. So I'm very much inspired by inanimate objects most of the time. I've made fishbowl costumes. I've made like miniature house, dollhouse costumes, a Furby. And I just look at things in my everyday life. For example, one day I really wanted pizza. I was thinking about pizza, and then I thought, why can't I make a bikini out of pizza? So I did that. It's just for me, I love looking at random shit from everywhere and thinking, how can I make this fashionable? Or how can I put this on my body? It's all about wearable art for me. So I've been asked this question before, actually, by people who haven't been to as many shows. And I think it's really interesting because I kind of thought this before going to shows as well, but does my drag name change or character change with looks? I would say the name never changes because the name is the brand, it's Jelly. And that's why I chose Jelly is because it kind of, it's gelatinous, it can fit into any mold. And I really like to do two very different looks, but still always the same face. As for character, I would say the character always adapts to every song. My approach to songs is treat any song like an opera or a musical theater, where I'm the character singing the song even if it's the biggest pop hit, even if the whole song is just like oons, 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 oons. Treat it like I'm singing this song as an emotional moment in a movie or a play. Overall, I love drag so much. It has given me an outlet where I can really do everything I like. I always loved music as a kid. I always loved drawing as a kid. And I was always a big fan of performing. And this has given me a spot where I can put all of that together, do everything I love. I'm glad our school I'm glad our school supports diversity. Centennial even has a hotline for LGBT youths. You can call 1-800-268-9688 for more information. Oh, hey, what's up? How's it going? Oh, hey. What? What? Are you, what, what? What? Yeah, huh? where? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I am so sorry. Like, you know, traffic at Eglinton because, you know, the construction, right? I barely had time to grab this coffee. Oh, and here you go. I bought this for you. Oh. A head nod. Thank you. Haven't they been working on the LRT for like 10 years now? Know, crazy, right? It caused so many businesses to shut down. Yeah. Mmm. This is actually really good. I know, Where right? Where did you get this coffee from? I'm glad you asked. I got it from Eglinton Grill, which used to be a video rental store. My friend Leana can explain more about it since she is a longtime resident of the Eglinton West area. Hi, my name is Leana, and I'm a longtime resident of Eglinton West. So, there's a store that's transitioned into a whole bunch of different things, but it used to be called Variety and Video. Variety and Video changed over because of all the innovations in technology, and after that, construction on Eglinton West, they had to figure out what they were doing and change to Eglinton Grill. Eglinton Grill is owned by Steve Tassis. My name is Steve Tassis. I'm a business owner in the west end of the city. I opened up uh, back in 1985. I opened up a Variety and Video. Back then, uh, Variety and Video uh, was booming. Variety and Video had VHS movies, cassettes. Everyone would go there, you know, like 
back in the day to rent their movies for two dollars. They had the concept of uh, renting a video and buying a, a snack because it was variety in video. You would come in, rent a movie and get a can of pop or a bottle of pop, a bag of chip, and that $2.99 rental would generate a $20 sale. So I grew up going to this corner store, three years old, and just getting little candies, like being offered by the, by the owner, and meeting the community, and just getting the, probably the same movie every week. So I did that for about uh, two and a half decades, uh, 30 years, and then the video business started to die. And not only did my business suffer, but with the construction of the LRT along Edmonton, it became worse. A customer who I became friends with uh, was a culinary chef at a college and he would say, hey, Steve, you know, like, uh, why don't you just switch it over to an all-day breakfast? And my son came up with the name Eglinton Grill. When it first happened, the change was shocking. Everyone was sad to see the blue sign go. I'm the owner of Variety Video for 32 years. Now I'm the proud owner of Eglinton Grill. And this is going to be our new storefront. When you taste the food and you actually see the work that was put into um, creating a new entity for themselves and adapting to what the changes are on Eglinton West, then you have to respect it because the food tastes good. When I go shopping for the restaurant, I buy nothing but quality. I buy quality bacon, quality sausage, I buy quality turkey bacon, we buy ground beef that we make our own homemade burgers from. So essentially, you can come here, you can sit down, and you can have a breakfast, three eggs, Four pieces of protein, your choice of bacon, ham, sausage, or turkey bacon, home fries or french fries, your choice of brown toast, white toast, or rye toast for $6.99. They have maybe, I don't know, eight coffees, different kinds of coffees. Their cheese danishes are also delicious. <laughs> I loved it. Um, so they actually make it a little diner. It's actually a little diner right now, and it's just that kind of feel, like you feel like you're... On a, on a little TV set, just having a home-cooked meal in your community. If you want to come down, it's uh, at Keelan Eglinton. It's on the uh, southeast corner. It's uh, 2609 Eglinton Avenue West. Uh, my restaurant is Eglinton Grill. And if you mention that you saw this video, I'll be more than happy to treat you to something in my restaurant. When I used to rent out movies. Oh my God, those were the days, you know? Right, but yeah. now I have Netflix and Amazon Prime and Disney Plus. Yeah, I have those too. And I also use Apple TV, Crave TV, and Hulu. And by the way, I really love watching Indian movies and comedy specials, you know? Yeah, I love watching comedy stand-up. I know. I know, it's really good when you watch it in person, you know? Mm-hmm, yeah. yes. In person is always better yes. if you watch. Whenever you have the chance to get a mm -hmm, show, mm -hmm. you should watch one. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. We should have a national team. I'm going to give you guys my best seven minutes, but I'll tell you what I tell my wife, okay? It's only going to be good for two. <laughs> and when it's good, it's going to be at, like, random sporadic times that I won't be able to replicate in the future, which is why I have two friends here filming it. <laughs> How am I going to get better? I'm Jay Rainville. Uh, I'm a comedian. I also work in public administration. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. And, uh, and I'm a stand-up comedian. Uh, I started four, five months ago uh, at the end of May. That was my first experience doing doing stand-up I had always wanted to do it so I had been writing jokes at the beginning of May and then uh, and then at the end I, I, I a friend at work referred me to a guy named Danton Lamar who's a comedian in the city and he connected me with like an illegal backyard COVID comedy show so I did that for the first time uh, it was my birthday on Friday thank you another birthday ruined by Alec Baldwin 
So what is the actual writing process for you like when you write stand up? Like how do you come up with your jokes? Mm. I have like a, a few ways. I think uh, the first way is what I'll call like coincidental writing. So the stuff that I just encounter every day, the things that, you know, the contradictions in life. When I think uh, what I remember reading once is wherever you call bullshit in something is a joke. I'll either say them into my phone using the voice recorder or I'll just type it out and capture those in my phone. Uh, or, you know, if nothing's around, I'll grab like, I don't know, like a little piece of paper, whatever I can possibly find to write down the joke. Whenever I talk to my brother, I feel like I need to be writing stuff down because he's funnier than I am. Uh, so I steal everything that he says. And he got a better hair hairline than me. Anyway, what do you feel like when you bomb? <laughs> Bombing is like when you fall off your bike in front of like a lot of people. It's like the embarrassment hurts more than the actual pain. Like just have everybody wit I don't know it's when you see other people bomb it it almost hurts just as much I go maybe once a week every two weeks I have a serious like existential crisis where I think about quitting uh so that's how bad a bomb can be where a, a bomb can make you feel like you don't want to ever do this again that's uh I think that's what like ultimately weeds people out I have two daughters so it's like having three moms which is why I do this because nobody listens to me uh, so on my birthday, I went to go see Dune at 10.30, alone. What do you love most about stand-up? That's hard to say. I feel like I love stand-up because it's the profession that goes along with who I am as a person. Like, I've been in a regular day job for like 14 years now, and I'm one of those people who has no choice but to be who they really are. Okay, this is my time. You guys have been great. Great comics coming up. I feel like, tell me how the show went. Uh, I think it went great. I think it was my best show so far. That was set 53. So, yeah, I'm really, really, really happy with that. I'm only, I'm just about five months in. And uh, I feel like it's just... I don't know, it's a confirmation. It's a confirmation of what I've been doing and, and working at and you know, the times that like I'm away and I like deeply miss my kids. You get a night like this and you feel like it was worth it. And I'm showing them the, like what pursuing a dream looks like. Hey, oh my gosh, did you watch the Oscars? I can't believe oh Will Smith God. slapped Chris Rock. That was like so that. unexpected. Like, I mean, what if I slapped you right now? Whoa, 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 on live television? No, 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 never. No, 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 no way, no way. Yeah, I, I think I would rather go to a concert instead of getting that. Can you sing a song right now? I mean, I would like to think I can okay. sing, but how about this? When the semester's over, we all get together for some karaoke. I agree. Oh, and I had not for that idea. Not. So Harish, wait, what are some of your favorite songs though? Well, it's hard to tell because I really like Hollywood music, right, that are featured in the Hollywood films. So, and I do take lessons from a Hollywood keyboardist named New York Raja, who I refer to as Master. Mm, New York. New York. Hi everyone, Warnakam. My original name is Guru Raja Rayo, popularly known here among the Tamil community as New York Raja. I come from a musical family. My music knowledge is definitely a blessing from my grandfather, Rangarajaya. I started teaching seriously, uh, establishing a school, the Sariga Music School of Fine Arts. It's a non-profit corporation. And uh, I feel really proud and happy in, in passing a little knowledge that I have to the next generation. And uh, we have produced a lot of uh, very good musicians, including the interviewing person, Harish, so the struggle to become a composer into films is just 
phenomena, phenomenal struggle. Uh, it, it's it's unimaginable struggle. I did go through a lot of struggle in trying to get an opportunity in the film to become a composer. There were a lot of hit and miss chances, pretty close, even with the superstar Rajini Kant. But it was not meant to be. So uh, one way, it's, it's been a while that I realized already that thank God I didn't become a composer in films. Uh, because if I had become a composer in films, I might not have so first come into goes. teaching. Uh, the seven notes in our classical Indian music is Sari, Gama, Pa, Dani. It's equivalent to your Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. So we're going to be learning this in Indian classical notations. Let's go, Risha. So teaching and making the younger generation into better musicians is more than become a composer myself. On that note, I did compose for a movie that was released here in Toronto, produced in Toronto. Uh, the movie is called Madi. It's a Tamil feature film. It was released 10 years ago. <laughs> And I wish all the younger generation uh, best of uh, life, best of everything in their life, including good music. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. He has taught me a lot over the years. Hey, since you asked me to sing, how about you play a little something for us? Sure, no problem. Just give me a minute to set up my keyboard. Okay. Well, I am super excited to hear music from different cultures, which reminds me why I love our city of Toronto so much. It is so culturally diverse with many people and places to go. Of all places, my favorite would be downtown on Brimner Boulevard. Hi, my name is Jeremy Prasad, and we're live from Toronto, Canada, downtown. And we're going to take a walk today along Bremner Boulevard. So let's take a walk with me. Right now, we're in the area of the Scotiabank Arena and Maple Leaf Square. The Scotiabank Arena was formerly known as the Air Canada Centre, which was built in 1998. It was then changed into the Scotia Bank Arena in 2018. It is the home of the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Toronto Raptors. This whole entire area gets turned into the Jurassic Park during the NBA playoffs, where fans go wild. So yeah, man, that's the area right here. Let's continue walking with me. We're going to take a walk down Bremner Boulevard. The Metro Toronto Convention Center, also known as the MTCC for short, hosts some of the biggest conventions of the city and live events, uh, such as the G20 Summit in 2010 was held here, and also the Canadian International Auto Show is also he held here every year as well. Some of the biggest live video gaming events also have been over here. So if you want to know where the big convention shows are, it's right here at the Toronto, Metro Toronto Convention Center. The Rippies Aquarium was opened in 2013 and is home to 2,500 different aquatic life forms. There is over 5 million liters of water in the Rippies Aquarium and it's a cool sight to see. It's home to many sharks, jellyfish, stingray, and you can even find Nemo here. Next up on the Bremner Boulevard, we got the Rogers Center which opened in 1989 when it was known as the Sky Dome. It changed its name in 2005 back to the Rogers Center when it was owned by Ted Rogers. But it is home to the Toronto Blue Jays 
and many people take pride in their Blue Jays. This site right here is in honor of the Canadian National Railroad, which some of it is still left preserved here today. And in honor of that, we have the Steam Whistle Brewery. The Steam Whistle Brewery was founded in the year 2000 and is Toronto's homegrown brewery with our own authentic beer. It's actually pretty good. I had a few a couple weeks ago. Felt pretty nice. And yeah, if you take a look, some of the stuff are still intact, preserved from way back in the days, and they're never getting rid of it. Canadian National Railroad. Last on our tour of Bremner Boulevard is the CN Tower, which is 553 meters tall. It is the ninth tallest freestanding structure in the entire world and was built in 1973. It was the tallest structure in the world for 32 years until the Burj Khalifa was built in Dubai. This is the last tour, stop on our tour and this is Walk With Me. I'll see you later from Toronto, Canada. See you in Tower, baby. And now, without further ado, we will watch a live performance from Harish. Wow, what a great way of displaying diversity and a great way to end our show because unfortunately, that is all the time we have. From Centennial College Story Arts Center, thanks, thanks for, for watching, watching the, the journal. journal. Yeah, good job. It's okay. Good job.